If you really want to practice and you're, you're stuck and you have good, healthy self-confidence, this is it, you know? When he talks to himself, you stupid ego, what are you doing? You know, what is, why is it so important to be right now? Just, you know, or to say, if you say that somebody by nature is negative, why are you getting upset when you see that they are negative? It's like getting upset at fire when it makes smoke. And why, when you think somebody is not by nature negative, but just from time to time negative, why getting upset when they're negative? Then you know it's like the clouds in the sky who are just passing by. You know, I'm getting so, so surprised at people sometimes. They talk about somebody as, oh, he's such a pain in the neck, blah, blah. And every time they get upset when they again do something. And then I say, but you told me that he reacts like this. Why are you getting upset now? What are you expecting? if you say it's his nature. How can he act differently if you say he is, he is like this? Those are women who talk about men, like I think. I mean, or men maybe don't share it with me, I don't know. Anyway, so, um, so this is why I wanted to clarify. So if you want to learn about meditation, the eighth chapter, that's not the one to learn. It's more five, four or five, where it talks about mindfulness and uh, so not about shamatha. Not about the nine steps or anything like that. You find this in different texts. Anyway, so now I really kind of, now we have maybe even less people for the eighth chapter. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it's good to be honest and to tell you what you get into. We're not here to attract people and then, you know, so it's like, that it's, it's good, it's great. I mean, it's, it's so beautiful. This text is so beautiful. And, um, and it's so, you know, it's been written, what, in the ninth century something? 800 and something? At the beginning, when somebody gave me this book, I said, I was not a Buddhist, and somebody gave me this, I said, what do, you, what do you want me to read this? You know, it's like kind of old wisdom like that. And then I was in India traveling around. I didn't have anything to read. And I just, I don't know why, I fell on the eighth chapter. When he's arguing with his ego, why not to exchange yourself with others? I think, shit, it's still the same, you know? All these hundreds of years later, we still behave in the same stupid way. It's very modern, this whole thing, except for when he talks about Buddhas and Vajradhara and Manjushri and Bodhisattvas and all this, then maybe we don't understand. But this, how he argues with himself, how it is more beneficial to be concentrated on others, it's very, very modern and very accurate. But you need to have healthy self-confidence and believe in your own natural goodness. Mm -hmm. I invite the people to come even they didn't uh, join the, fe the previous uh, seven parts. So what do you say now? Yeah, it's quite a lot. And also even the previous parts, if you don't have... Try to read the book where it has a few, a bit of commentary on it. I'm talking about all the people here. I asked them to, to come to, to join us. Even they didn't... Uh, yeah, so. it's okay, but they need to be prepared. I understand, so. so if you read the text that I wrote, I said it's okay to come, but you might have difficulties to understand in, the, in a good way because you didn't have the preparation. So it's okay to come. I'm not saying you shouldn't come. It's good, just good to be prepared what you're getting into. And also, you know, I also then said, okay, if there's not enough people, we can cancel. But then again, I said, why cancel? If two people are interested in practicing this, why cancel it? It's so precious, even only one, you know? And even nobody, and I talk to myself, it's precious, <laughs> because I also have to remind myself of all this. Now we come to Tantra in this, you know? So we have bodhicitta, so we want to attain full enlightenment, so we know how to benefit others, and then, but then if you go on the long path, it takes too long. So please grant me blessings to be able to follow the quick Vajrayana teachings by feeling sentient being sufferings very unimaginably unbearable for even the shortest second as my own, and to attain the enlightened state of a Buddha immediately at this very moment by keeping my ordinations and orders. So as, of, as if you practice Tantra, you have taken refuge, means you have refuge vows, you have taken bodhicitta vows, bodhisattva vows, 
And if it's highest yoga tantra, you have to take tantric vows. That's big engagement. We're not able to keep these vows, but at least we want to keep these vows. Uh, so immediately at this very moment, by keeping my ordinations and the orders of the Guru with greater and better care than anything else in my life, for the sole purpose of enlightened, enlightening all sentient beings. Okay, so that's the ideal way. Don't forget, it's just aspiration. We're not able to do this. And this is also what many people mistake. They mistake the aspiration that somebody's saying, now you have to do like this. It's not. It's a motivation, it's an aspiration. And then slowly, slowly we train to get there. Okay, so then he explains the four opponent powers. So these are Kish Adam Yesh's words, yeah? There is no negativity that cannot be purified. The purification process is basically a psychological one. Lama Yeshi says, he didn't put that in, but somebody must have put it. It is our mind, and on the basis of that, our actions that create the negativity, and it is our mind that transforms it by creating positive energy. Although in Buddhism we rely on Buddha's methods for the purification, it is not as if it is the Buddha purifying us or forgiving us. We ourselves, as Lama says, do the work. We purify by applying the four opponent powers. So it's written in the sadhana, but if you come to the retreat, I'm not going to, we're not going to read this every session. It's enough to know it and then that's it. And then we do specific meditations, like changing a little bit. Okay. Uh, so the first one is the power of regret. And this you would be sitting in meditation, maybe reflection, listening to somebody leading it or reading it yourself. Sincerely regret from the depths of your heart anything you have done to harm any living being. There's one comma too much here on this day, in this life, in all past lives. It is good to contemplate the various actions that you remember having done and then to regret all the things as well that you don't remember. So it's really good to, now we don't have time to do it, but it's just a, you know introduction about what to do. But it's, from time to time, it's really good to, to look. These negative actions, what do they do to me? How do they make me feel when I remember them? Then you switch and you think about positive action. And you see that you have no control how you feel. You can't say, I don't want to feel like this. I don't think anybody who comes to these courses feel good, feels good about their negative actions. Actually, I don't think any human being feels really good about their negative actions. That's my assumption. I think it's a good one. I think everybody suffers. Not even when the results come, but because of being so confused and find, trying to find happiness in negative actions. Uh, so the reason to regret is based on the understanding of karma. We cannot bear the thought of future suffering that we ourselves will experience due to the harm we have done to others. We experience everything due to our past karma, our past actions. So having harmed others, we ourselves will necessarily experience suffering in the future. So we just assume that, right? And who wants that? I mean, who wants to suffer? We know from the present suffering that we do not want it, so the logic is, therefore, to remove the karmic seeds, now the, the, the thing, before they ripen, as future suffering. Okay? that clear? Then the second is the power of reliance. There are two parts to this step. One, we rely upon the doctor whose medicine we will take to purify our deluded actions, in this case the Buddha. It's not that we need Buddha to forgive us. Rather, we rely upon him by using his methods to purify ourselves. <laughs> two, we also rely upon other beings the very beings we have harmed by developing compassion for them, we make the wish to purify for their sake that we're not harming them again. All those we have harmed in this life and in the past make a strong aspiration to do this practice of purification so that from now on we can only benefit others, not harm them. So it's a good way, you know, it's a good way to make up all the harm that we have done by saying, I want to become a Buddha. So one is spontaneously, I will not harm others anymore. 
Secondly, I will have the ability to guide them to that state if they're interested. That's the best way. It's much better than to invite them for dinner. It's okay. You visualize Vajrasattva above the crown of your head. We will have a tanka, hopefully, in the retreat. I guess there is one, yeah? And you will have a picture, maybe also. Maybe I send it to somebody and then we can have a photograph. There must be an SMM still from the last retreat, I think. We'll have a look at, at your Yom Kippur. So visualize Vajrasattva on the crown, above the crown of your head. If it's too difficult, yeah, it's difficult to visualize above your crown. So you can do either one thing, you put, put him in front, or you visualize yourself sitting in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. That works, because for the retreat itself, he has to be on the crown, not in front. So I couldn't get him there. I couldn't see him clearly, so I, I did that mirror thing. Mm -hmm. Then it worked. So he's your guru, and again, so if you have a guru, then it's not so difficult to think about it. We're trained to see the guru as the Buddha. Manifesting in this aspect for your benefit, this is important. He, to see that he wants to benefit you and purify your negative, help you purify your negative karma. He's made of radiant, blissful white light, because that's the nature of our mind, this blissful white light. So that's why we use light, and any being prefers light to darkness. Unless you are somebody from science fiction, you know, and these beings, uh, well, maybe a spider, or I don't know. Worms, worms don't like, like uh, light because they will be eaten. That's why they don't, like in, they don't like to be in the daylight, because they will be eaten by birds. That's why they go back into the dark. Anyway. <clears throat> Sitting cross-legged on a white lotus, which although born out of the mud, is unstained by mud, just like our enlightened potential, which is, ne we can never lose it. So, which is born out of delusions, but is unstained by them. His face is radiant and beautiful. His eyes are long and narrow, peaceful and full of love and compassion for us. Maybe you go back to the picture and I just read it so you can, you can see. And it's three-dimensional and, as I said, it radiates spontaneous light like the sun. His eyes are long and narrow. His mouth is red and very sweet. His hair is black and held up on top knot. His arms are crossed at his heart. Here it's not crossed, but it's okay. Uh, left underneath the right, but he's holding Vajan Bell. So that means that is the union of um, compassion and wisdom. Meaning he's a fully enlightened being. So the main thing is to really feel the presence of this enlightened energy above your head and to imagine that it is a mirror image of your own potential. Then we say a prayer of refuge to Guru Vajrasattva. And so you can go back to the text. <laughs> so this we did in the practice for Punsok. So go for refuge until I'm enlightened. The Buddha Dharma Supreme Assembly. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. Then again, the four immeasurable thoughts. It's a really, really good training to open your heart, to say these words again and again and again and again. If you wake up in the morning with a feeling of, clo you know, kind of tense here and closed, just think, okay, whatever happens today may be of benefit to others. It won't be long, the feeling disappears. Because not just me, it's also others. And then we go, all others that I meet, you know, then it's, it's actually quite easy sometimes. But we have to do it. We have to remember it. So that's quite clear. It's the four immeasurable. So it's love, compassion, joy, and what's it called? Joy and uh, equanimity. Then the seven limb practice. Also, it's a very profound practice that usually we just rattle it down, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the mind is not pulling along with it. So it's seven different minds. First one is the mind which is full of respect. Second is the mind of, mind of generosity. We visualize making these offerings to all the Buddhas. Um, the, the third one is the mind of confession. We lay bare what we did in a negative way. Then we rejoice to bring it back up again. And uh, we request for the Buddhas to come back again and again and again, because if there is no need, they will not come back. They will still be around. 
Because you see, when we take refuge, we train the mind to be spontaneously, as when we take, take refuge in bodhicitta, we, uh, we familiarize the mind to be a benefit to others. And at one point, it will make it spontaneously. And that's why the Buddhas are always there. Because they have trained like this. They did refuge many times. That's why one does refuge three times. So that we get the training of being of benefit to others, then it comes spontaneously and naturally. And not, oh yeah, I'm going to this up. I'm ready to do this now. Not like this. Yeah. So that's why the Buddhas are always there, because they did the same training to become Buddhas. They were not born as Buddhas. Uh, so we, he asked them to come back again and again and again, and then we dedicate. Then again, it's what we did before, outer and inner mandala. Okay, then, okay, now, then, in order to increase, which now you visualize it right, in order to increase, increase our trust that Vajrasat is actually there because there's zero trust at the beginning, I mean, with me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, 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 it's okay. I can see, I can visualize, but, you know. So then we have to do certain steps. So I uh, visualize that light goes out from Guru Vajrasattva's heart to all the ten directions, hooks the energy of body, speech, and mind of all the other enlightened beings of the universe. Yeah. So, um, so this is to remind us that he's not the only Buddha, that the Buddhas are everywhere. Actually, here the step is not there. Then it, sometimes there's another step where the light goes out to purify all sentient beings. So we have to remind ourselves. I'm constantly surrounded all the time, 24 hours every day by countless beings. I'm never alone. Yet so often we have a feeling of being alone, but these beings are always there, which is separated by walls, by distance, by mountains, by oceans, I don't know. How can you ever think you're alone? We're sharing this planet with so many other beings who are always there, wanting happiness, not wanting to suffer. So we, we send the light out to them by remembering, hey, I'm not the only one here. And it really widens the mind. Because you remember in the morning, I talked about the spaciousness of the mind. So when we start all sentient beings, the mind goes And we start to feel, gosh, man, I got so much space. So that also, just this one sentence, if you're locked in your whatever is happening, and you, and you go like, hey, but the mind is spacious. What am I, kind of thing. And you go into, you try to go into that space as you train in meditation. Then you feel whatever is going on objectively, anger, depression, desire, disappointment, whatever, the person or the one, the, the energy or the one who perceives it is always calm and is always spacious. Then you start to identify with that instead of with what, you know, the storm. So don't forget, your mind is totally spacious. Everything has place in it because it's not material. Um, so anyway, so first he kind of hooks back all the enlightened energy and dissolves into him. So then we think now he becomes all the Buddhas. Now we start with the third power, is the power of the antidote. So we have the perfect doctor on our crown, okay? Then the antidote, uh, which is the actual medicine, is the three stages to this. The first is the purification of the body. So Guru Vajrasattva very compassionately sends powerful white nectar, like coming out of a hose, very forcefully from his heart and enters your crown chakra and pours into your entire body, filling you completely. It keeps coming and it forces out of your lower orifices all the harm you have ever done to any living being with your body in the form of inky liquid which pours out of you and disappears into space, not one atom left. So this again is about emptiness. We learn to let go of all this garbage and shit and just flush it out, but we refuse. Oh no, I prefer to be a bad person because otherwise I might become a nobody if I have no more problems. You know, the ego doesn't like it so much. Um, 
So that again, you know, unless until you are able to really visualize and do this, it takes a long time. Because we're used to clean, we're used to hold on, we're used to do all kinds of things. So you just do your best, you just try to visualize that. Um, not one atom left, feel completely purified, recite the mantra the whole time. So reciting the mantra and reading, this is not possible. So we just recite the mantra once, or together, and then two, three minutes, you try to meditate. Okay? Hold on, we don't have that much time left, but it's okay. If you can't pronounce it, doesn't matter. Om Asya Sattva Samaya Anopalaya Asya Sattva Deno Patishta Tityome Bhava Sutokayome Bhava Sufokayome Bhava Anuraktome Bhava Savasidi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Suchame Chitanshiyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Savatatagata Vashama Me Muncha Vashabhava Mahasamaya Sattva so you just try to feel that cleansing energy on your crown and from him light pours down either like a tube or like from his whole body it doesn't matter so much very forcefully like a shower it enters your body and all the negativities you visualize them as black ink or in whatever form feels meaningful to you so how would your actions if they would have form of the body look, like killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, give them a form, it can be just black, it can be smoke, it can be tar, it can be kind of scorpions, spiders, it can be um, tumors, it can be blood, it can be um, pus, you know, let the mind find its own way of making it meaningful. So these kind of, this kind of stuff comes out of the lower openings of our body and totally vanishes into emptiness. It doesn't exist from its own side. train the mind to let go and so what we're trying to do is feel so happy that your negativity of body is purified really imagine now that it's not possible that your body could do anything but benefit others no way can it harm and really want that so we especially think that all our negative habits tendencies are totally non-existent just do it, you know, don't worry, oh, how long does it take for it to work and all this, just do it. Okay, then the purification of the speech. So the second stage, Guru Vashasattva very happily sends powerful nectar from his heart chakra. Again, it pours forcefully into your crown, filling your entire body this time forcing the negativities up to the top of your body, like when water filling a dirty glass forces the dirt to come to the top and to overflow, all the negativity of your speech, all the gossip and malicious speech and useless speech and lying and whatever, all is purified by this powerful nectar, leaving your body through the top orifices in the form of inquiliquid or just smoke sometimes disappearing into space, not one atom left. So we, you, we learn to work with the energies. First it was down, now it goes up. Om Asha Sattva Samaya Manopalaya Vasha Sattva Deno Patishta Didyo Me Bhava Sutokayo Me Bhava Supokayo Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Savasidi me praya cha sarva karma sucha me chita shiyam kuru hum ha 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 ho Bhagavan savatata gata vashama me muncha vashabhava mahasamaya sa ha om pe So again, you visualize and you think 
you feel so happy that your speech is now completely purified and that no way could you do anything but saying something beneficial or useful or appropriate or kind to others and again to have to wish to be able to do that not now because now we still have tendencies but in the future that we want that we want i want to have a speech that only benefits and thanks to generating regret taking refuge and bodhicitta the light coming into me and all of this goes up on top thanks to that I'll, i'm able to do that of the mind. So Guru Vashasattva very compassionately sends this time light from his heart chakra. This powerful white light enters your crown chakra, fills your entire body being and just like when you turn on a light in a room, the darkness is instantly dispelled. So too, just as the light hits your heart chakra, the darkness and the confusion, negativity of your mind, all the anger and violence, the depression, resentment, jealousy, bitterness, or all are instantly dispelled, not one atom left. Om Vasya Sattva Samaya Manupalaya Vasya Sattva Dino Patishta Tidyo Me Bhava Sutto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Savasiddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutta Me Chitta Shiyam Guru Ha Ha Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vashama Me Muncha Vasha Nas Maya Sattva Aumpe Again, feel happy that all your delusions, which are the cause of the harm we do with our body and speech, are totally purified, gone, finished. That no way is there any space in your heart now for anything but love and kindness, forgiveness and wisdom, bliss and compassion. So we take the result into the past. We see ourselves as the person we want to be. And we just enjoy it, knowing that we have the potential. Okay, so the first one is, um, is when all three lights kind of come together. So. This time, imagine that Guru Vashasattva sends light again and fills you completely. Ah, oh, no, it's not three lights, it's just one. This time, imagine that Guru Vashasattva sends light again and it fills you completely and eradicates even the most subtlest imprints of negative, negative energy from your mind. Just like once you remove the garlic from a jar, you still need to remove the smell. So we still remove the veils, the very subtle veils that are there for being, for being omni, omniscient. And we recite the mantra, so one more time. This time it doesn't go anywhere. Because it's very, very subtle what we are um, purifying now, because the grosser things of body, speech, mind have already gone. Om Vasya Sattva Samaya Manopalaya Vasya Sattva Dino Patishta Tidyo Me Bhava Sutto Kayo Me Bhava Supo Kayo Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutta Me Chitta Shiyam Guru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagavan Savatata Gata Vashama Me Muncha Vasha Bhava Mahasamaya so then you feel that you are completely purified, feel very happy. Guru Vashasattva is happy too, of course. Like a mother and father who is happy when the kids are doing what they're supposed to do. Then the last one is the fourth power, the power of promise or determination or resolve. So the fourth step in the purification process is such an important one is the determination not to harm with our body, speech, and mind again. Without this, we keep doing the same old things. So determination to not harm is like a beacon that guides our body, speech, and mind in new directions. If you actually vow to not do certain actions again for the rest of your life, fantastic, but be realistic. If you can vow not to do them again for a year, a month, a day, even a minute, whatever is realistic. Then, in general, 
vow to make the effort to avoid harming others. To make the effort, okay? This determination not to do again is what gives us the strength to turn ourselves around.